Cape Air operates small, single-pilot airplanes from major cities into smaller, more remote corners of the United States and Caribbean in order to connect people to these spectacular places. Join us as we travel from Boston to Bar Harbor on one of America's most interesting airlines. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com, coming to you from Acadia National Park in Maine. How'd I get here? Cape Air. Our 200-mile flight from Boston took a little more than the scheduled one hour and 20 minutes, thanks to a headwind. We flew as high as 5,000 feet before descending out of the clouds for some beautiful views of the Maine coastline. Based on what we saw on the ground in Maine, the trip was completely worth it. I'll share more of these stunning views at the end of the video, but for now, let's talk about Cape Air. It occupies a unique corner of the airline ecosystem. Cape Air operates a fleet of Cessna 402s, Britain Norman Islanders, Cessna Caravan Amphibians, and brand new Technam P2012 Travelers. These are not the jets or even turboprops you might have seen at other airlines, but they're important tools for the unique job Cape Air faces. Our trip was booked on a Cessna 402, which has an unusual seating configuration as far as commercial aircraft in the U.S. are concerned. Passengers can't select seats. Instead, you'll be assigned a spot, and you might even find yourself sitting up front with the pilot. Our journey began in an Uber in Boston after we'd taken the Northeast Regional Train from D.C. the night before. So here we are at Boston's Logan International Airport. Do you remember the, uh, where we were going the last time we were here? Honolulu, the longest domestic flight. And it's still the longest domestic flight, isn't it? I think so. I think so. Is it operating now, though? I think so. Awesome. Well, we're going a little closer to home, uh, just up to Maine, which used to be part of Massachusetts way back in the day. Fun fact. This airport is one of my favorites. Even now, there's more international service here than I'd expect, and it's generally a pretty beautiful place. Cape Air's ticket counters are nestled among the jet blue counters in Terminal C. We checked our bags, which were weighed and sent on their way. Our carry-on bags were also weighed. A little different kind of check-in process. You don't necessarily get a seat assignment. It's based on weight and balance, how full the flight is, and you've got to not only weigh your, your bags, your cabin bags, but also reveal your weight. So uh, maybe Cape Air is a good uh, diet plan uh, in addition to a good airline. <laughs> One other note about baggage. We had the option to take our bags with us through security and gate check them. But since checking bags on flights from Boston is free, we chose to do that. However, everything, even Suzanne's purse, had to be gate checked. We were only able to take what we could fit into our pockets onto the plane. It's worth your time to visit Cape Air's website because their baggage policies are kind of confusing. I'll link to it below. After making our way through security, we decided to head to the Priority Pass Lounge in Terminal C since Cape Air does not have its own lounge. Even though it was listed as open on the website, the lounge is closed, which is understandable. It's still COVID time, so stuff is unpredictable. I am looking forward to the post-COVID era when websites are accurate, though. Oh well, there's still plenty to see. Just looking to see if I can see Scott from Sandspotter. Scott, are you in there? I know that's one of your favorites. The walk over to Cape Air's gate, number 27 in Terminal C, took us by a cool playground for kids and some comfortable looking rocking chairs. But soon we'd reached gate 27 and Cape Air's flight line came into view. These Cessna 402s are small but powerful workhorses, perfect for the mission Cape Air assigns them. As we were boarding, I heard one passenger say, that's our plane? If you're expecting a jumbo jet for your Cape Air flight, you'll be sorely disappointed. But if you want a comfortable, sporty trip, look no further. One important note, there are no bathrooms on Cape Air's airplanes, so be sure to take care of any uh, personal business beforehand. You can even catch up with the office before you depart if you need to. Prior to boarding, the ground crew made it pretty clear they didn't want cameras or phones out during boarding, so unfortunately, I don't have any footage of that experience. If you're watching this, it's because I wasn't able to film the boarding process itself. It is outside, and it's raining, and um, I've never done this before, so I just thought I'd put something in here so you knew why we went straight from here in the terminal to the plane. But it was quick and painless. A quick shout-out to the ramp agents who said hello to me. 
But thanks so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate all you did on this day and every day to make flights like this both safe and fun. My seat was just behind what would ordinarily be the first officer's seat. Cape Air operates with just one pilot, so that's actually a passenger seat. The controls are disabled, though. Despite the weather, the views from this perspective were like seeing the airport for the first time. Everything seemed up close and massive. This, as far as I'm concerned, is the best way to get around an airport, bar none. In almost no time, we were throttling up and making our way along the runway before we soared up into the clouds on this grim New England day. My seat afforded me the best of all worlds. I had a great panoramic view of the cockpit, including the ability to see the GPS, which was better than almost any in-flight entertainment map. Speaking of IFE, as you can imagine, Cape Air does not offer any. As a result, it's a good idea to bring your own. I was also grateful for my Bose noise-canceling headphones. The Cessna 402 has a pretty loud cabin. Legroom is understandably limited. At 5 feet 11 inches, I had to contort myself a bit. That said, the seats were comfortable for a flight as long as this one, one of the longest in the Cape Air network. It took us about 90 minutes to get up to Bar Harbor, thanks to that headwind. We reached our initial cruising altitude of 5,000 feet, and I checked out the safety card and other amenities on this flight. Thankfully, nobody needed one of these today. The cabin temperature was comfortable, but there were individual air vents in case you need them. And some seats had reading lights. Mine did not. Even though there was nothing to see, the view was still somehow mesmerizing. We descended a bit and left the clouds behind. As they parted, we could see the Atlantic Ocean below us. And then the main coast opened up and passengers on the left side of the airplane, including Suzanne, were treated to dramatic views. Cape Air is the only airline I know of with hubs that aren't connected to each other. Even though the airline counts the likes of Billings, Boston, St. Louis, and San Juan among its hub airports, you cannot fly between them with Cape Air. Also, file this away under the category of airport fun facts. Cape Air used to have a hub at Guam when it operated as a regional carrier for United Airlines serving Saipan and Rota with ATR-42s. But when that service ended in 2018, it also marked the end of turboprop operations for United Airlines. Today, Cape Air operates code shares with JetBlue, American Airlines, United Airlines, and Delta Airlines, meaning some of Cape Air's routes are seamlessly accessible to passengers on those airlines. Services like this one open up new corners of the country to people like us. Cape Air and a small handful of other similar airlines connect towns like Bar Harbor with major cities like Boston. Further, other Cape Air routes are operated with essential air services subsidies. That means they're a lifeline for even smaller, more remote rural communities that count on them as their only link to larger cities. Driving between Boston and Bar Harbor would take four hours and 40 minutes or so, and sure, you could fly into nearby Bangor, but having this nonstop link on a truly hassle-free hour and 20 minute flight is fantastic. Our pilot began setting the airplane up for landing. Even though the weather was rough on our day, we felt completely safe and relaxed on board. That said, not everyone is as comfortable in the sky as we are, so if you're a nervous flyer or suffer from motion sickness, I'm not sure I'd suggest you jump onto Cape Bear for your first journey. Although it is as safe as any other airline in the country, the airplanes are smaller and that can be a concern for some passengers. As for me though, I cannot wait to get back on board. Our pilot gently placed our Cessna 402 on the ground. I'm sorry to say my first, but definitely not my last trip with Cape Air had come to a close. Airports like Bar Harbor are great. It has everything a major hub airport has, just on a smaller scale. Luggage deliveries on a cart, 
There's TSA security and car rental services also. It's even got food. Thanks to Cape Air, access to scenes like these are possible with relative ease. My love of aviation can sometimes blind me to what it makes possible. But I've heard from a lot of you that you'd like to see a bit more from the ground, so here you go. I love the journey so much that I sometimes fail to share the world it opens up at either end of a trip. And thanks to Cape Air, we get to see one of the most beautiful corners of the United States. Maine's coast is spectacular. Between now and the next time, see you in the sky.